Then, welcome to the third uh, message in the series. Uh, know the devil so that you can focus on Jesus. Know the devil so that you can focus on Jesus. So at the end of the day, we are not trying to spend time in knowing the devil. No, we want you to have adequate information, basic information about the devil so that he no longer deceives you and you are now able to focus on all that Jesus has done for you, especially by giving his life for you on the cross of Calvary. Shall we pray? Father God, we want to thank you again. We bless you. We ask you, God, that you will please open our eyes to see the truth. When we see the truth, then the lie expires. Help us, O Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we are prayed. Amen. We want to take our anchor scripture from the book of Genesis chapter 3. The first time we are seeing the devil mentioned in the Bible. The first time that we are seeing the devil mentioned in the Bible. It now says, Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God has made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, as God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the, of the garden. Now, this is the first time we are coming in contact with the devil. And remember, in part one of the message, God told us clearly that Satan is a liar. That's what Jesus said. He said he is a liar. And is the father of lies. That he cannot abide anywhere there is truth. Because you cannot find one single truth inside of the devil. You cannot find it. That's why he's a liar. He's not telling lies because he decided to tell lies. He tells lies because he is just full of lies. No matter where you eat Satan from, what you will get from him will be lies. So I want us to now look at the first time we are coming in contact with Satan. Will you note with me that Satan did not come as Satan? When he will reveal himself to talk to the woman, he did not come as devil. Rather, he came as a serpent. And when you read that part, it says, Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God has made. Now, for Moses, who wrote the book of Genesis by Revelation, was trying to let you know that this serpent I'm talking about, this one that I'm seeing, is more subtle than every other one that I know of. I have seen serpents. You know Moses dealt with serpents very well. <laughs> I've seen serpents. I've seen all kinds of serpents. I've seen the way serpents do their things. But this one I'm seeing, though he's looking like a serpent, but actually this one is far more subtle than every other beast that I've ever seen. This one, <laughs> you know, it was Moses' way of trying to let you know that this thing, though it's a serpent, but this one goes beyond the normal criteria, characteristics, and everything of serpent that we know of. And even all the beasts of the field, this serpent, this one, is something else. Why? Satan decided he will not come in his form. He cannot even show in his original form. He had to lie and come in the form of a serpent. <laughs> we all know that uh, the devil is a spirit being. It's not a physical being. But when he will come to him, he didn't come as a spirit being. He must lie. He must present himself as something else. It is just natural. 
I, I need us to understand this. I need us to understand this. And stop allowing yourself to be blown left, right and center on the matter of Satan. He is a deceiver. If anybody comes to you and says we have caught Satan, please be rest assured it's a lie. <laughs> it's a lie. He is very subtle. He is a liar. That every form he will naturally present himself as is actually a lie. Every form he will ever present himself as is a lie. He cannot present himself truly as he is. That's why the only person we can trust to tell us about this person is Jesus. And he told us he's the enemy. is the doer of evil, the devil. And when Jesus said he is the light, we know that this is the enemy, the opposite of Christ. So this must be darkness. It's from Christ that we can get the full information. If you are to sit down with what Moses said, you will be looking at serpents. You will imagine serpents. No wonder people came out with serpentine spirit and all kind of names that we give everything. Because Satan will decide to come as serpent. He can come as anything, any other form except his original form. Now I begin to ask you, how many of us have seen Satan before? <laughs> Are you sure that what you saw was Satan? He is a liar. Naturally. Listen, if, you know, if we call a human being a liar, sometimes when push turns to shove, the human being can tell the truth. You know? A human being can tell you a lie. And later comes to tell you, I told you a lie. If the devil comes to tell you that, ah, that thing I say is a lie, please note, this is another lie he's telling you. <laughs> he's permanently, incurably a liar. And any time the devil handles the word of God, he is telling a lie. All this act of exaggeration. All this act of seeing what is written in the Bible and closing your eyes to it, <laughs> they are all characteristics of the devil. And at this point, I am, I'm, I'm, uh, uh, the point we're about to enter now, I'm a bit uh, careful because it is a sad story. It's a sad event that is happening. It is painful. It is sorrowful that this is happening. But we have allowed the devil. Every time something in the scripture is exaggerated, it is the devil that is at work. Every time a Bible verse is misinterpreted intentionally and sometimes unintentionally, it is the devil that is at work. He cannot present Bible verses for what they are. He must tamper with it. If you look at that Genesis chapter, if you go to Genesis chapter 2, and we are in verse, um, the later end of the verse, let me go to verse 18, thereabout. Uh, yeah, verse 17. It says, But of the three, uh, let's start from verse 16. Genesis chapter 2 verse 16. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden, thou mayest freely eat. But verse, verse 17 now says, But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For the day thou, shalt, thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. That was what God said. It was, there was no exaggeration. You can eat everything. There's only one tree you cannot eat about. But when the devil will speak, he said, Yeah! What is the meaning of yeah? What is yes? What is he yesing? 
What is the yes doing in that statement? What is yes? A deception. Yes. As God now said, you shall not eat of every tree in the garden what has happened exaggeration has come in elimination has come in god said you can eat everything he said yes you know if somebody comes and say yes <laughs> you are likely to forget all he's saying and just flow with his enthusiasm the way he said it with joy with yes going ahead you are likely to just say ah yes that is every act of dramatizing a simple word of god is the devil that is at work every act of tampering with the scriptures whether you did it sincerely or insincerely whether you are, it was from a pure heart or for a, from a dirty heart, every tampering with the word of God is a lie. And wherever there is a lie, even despite the fact that the word of God that has been spoken, once it is tampered with, it becomes of the devil. And brethren, I am saying this with all sense of, of reverence. It is the devil. And that's why I want you to know him. The devil does not stop you from reading the scriptures. No. You can do that one year, 365 days old Bible reading. And you can keep doing it for 40 years. It doesn't stop the devil. He doesn't mind. As long as you will not understand what is written there, as long as you will agree to start changing what is written there. He said this here, and he said this here. Let us neglect the other ones he said. This one that favors us, let us speak it and let's leave the other one. As long as that's what you will keep doing, that person is, has converted that Bible verse to a lie. And to Jesus, it's very simple. Everyone that does such, is actually the child of the devil. Satan is their father. Very simple, very clear. Not no more, no less. Once you cannot accept the scriptures as they are, and you will allow people tamper with the scriptures without you confirming it, then we have been caught up in a lie first time that the devil will be shown in the Bible it was scripture he came to a court scripture is the word that comes from the mouth of God that's why Jesus said in the book of Matthew chapter 4 that man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of the Lord if it's God that spoke it then it is a scripture if it is man that wrote it it is <laughs> a letter, a word, uh, whatever it is, an epistle. But when it is God that speaks it himself, it is scripture. So, devil came to quote the scripture, but he quoted it upside down. He exaggerated it. There are many lies of the devil. Devil does not mind opening the church. Devil does not mind financing a denomination and making them very prosperous and big. It is not a matter. Even he loves that so much because he prefers to stay in the lie. So that since all you are interested in is a church, and what you are interested in the church is to enjoy your service and to get a miracle, if that is all you want, how long does it cost Satan to start that? If the first time Satan will speak in the Bible, he came to quote scripture. How be it wrongly? What makes you think that that liar, as not today, hijacked a lot of denominations and converted it to a scripture quoting center? Only that they will not quote what Jesus said. They will quote whatever they want to quote and give whatever meaning that he was done. Simple. 
So I begin to see the work of the devil. The liar at work. Please note, he is a liar. He is, he is a permanent international intergalactic scammer. Who is a scammer? A scammer will sell for you a fake product with all the <laughs> all the signs of genuineness. Why are scammers successful? They study you and give you the original, but they are giving you fake. They will package everything for you. It will look good. They are going to study the original. They know what the original looks like. They understand the original. And they make perfect fake. That's what our people in China used to do in those days. They are still doing it now. But then, that was what we knew them for. Then they didn't know how to do anything original. All they did was fake. So, even I, I, saw, I once saw a um, Chinese Range Rover. It looks exactly like Range Rover. Everything Range Rover has was what it has. Then that it has a different name. Chinhin and Chinhin with that one funny name like that. Produce your own China will produce their own. Exactly like yours, but it is fake. That's what the devil does. That is gift. So when God, when Jesus said, I will build my church and the gate of hell will not prevail. Satan said, I'm not interested in prevailing against your church. I will create my own church too. <laughs> you have yours, I have mine. Can you imagine I create it? Do your teachings, I do my teachings. Simple. There is no place in the scripture where God said he's going to prosper you by how much you give to his auditorium or to his church, to his denomination, to his body of Christ or something like that. There are no scriptures like that. No scriptures like that. Actually, scriptures like um, bring all the tithes into the house of the Lord and test me if I will not pour down it, open the windows of heaven and pour you down a blessing and take away the vara from you. He's talking to farmers who already have a farm, who are already working. They already have farm. So the open window of, of heaven that I want to open is going to open to pour down good rain, fertilized rain into their farm. And ensure that this pest that devour plants will not affect them. They already have a business. They have something they are doing. And what he was seeking for was obedience to an instruction. The obedience to the instruction was the matter. Not that you want to prosper. You give your way to prosperity. Where did you find that in the scriptures? That you give your way to prosperity. To be prospered in anything, you must put time and work. You must work. So the ones that God was talking about were not lazy men at home. Who are... <laughs> of course, where, they, where would they even see tithes to bring if you did not have a farm? <laughs> it's only farmers that tithes uh, refer to in the Old Testament. So, how will you have even gotten a blessing if in the first place you don't have a farm? Because what you are bringing to the, to the temple was just 10% of your entire farm produce. Just 10%. So, you must have had something. And that's what God wants to bless. But no, trust Satan. He needed to put people under bondage. He needed to deceive. Since everybody wants prosperity, woo, we can make prosperity. Just tell them that if the seed in their hand is, if the money in their hand is not enough for their project, they should convert it to a seed. Oh God, how many persons have I met who have converted what they are supposed to use to do business to seed and their life has, now they are, they are in loss. How many? Who is at work? He's the devil. He knows how to take the scriptures, twist it around. You will never find it in the Bible. Such words, you will not find it in the Bible. There might be 
scriptures that look as though they are like it, but they never meant it. For instance, give shall be given unto you, full measure pressed down, shaken together shall men give unto your bosom. Even by that verse, you know that money is not entering your bosom. <laughs> when the Bible is talking about money, it talks about bags, it talks about purse. Bosom is in your heart. That's where your bosom is. And when you read that Bible verse, you discover that it's all about the good you do to others. People will do bad to you. Back to you. The bad you do, you receive it back. The good you do, you receive it back. That's what the Bible was talking about. Very clearly, that was where the talk was going about doing things. Not about money. But, oh, the liar. He knows how to twist it and confuse us. And will be looking up to a wrong place. And God has his own purpose. That's why you see someone like Brother Paul. When it was time to make, to raise money for, for ministry, he went to work. That's where you see uh, Jesus. When they met Jesus along the way. And they said, Jesus, come and pay tax. Jesus never said, uh, Peter, how much do we have? I said, oh, we just have a little penny. Oh, go and sow the penny because we are going to receive a bountiful response from God now. No, no, no. Jesus had to tell Paul, uh, Peter, your professional skill of, uh, of farming fish, that is fishing, we need to put it into place now. Only that favor will locate that fishing. That the fish will cash. We don't need to go again to be looking for how to sell it. It will have had money in its mouth. But we need to work to get the money. But favor, we look at it. There will be favor that will make it not to be we struggling with it. Because we are in his permanent uh, uh, will. And he will take care of our needs. Let's go and work for the money. Favor will locate us while we are doing it. That's what Jesus said. Jesus never said, no, just go and be sowing. The more you sow, the more you reap. The more you sow, the more you reap. The more you become, you, you have money to take care of your family. Jesus never said that. He never lived that life. He's a liar. He's a liar. And what is he aiming at? His aim is this. For you to feel as though you have given to the kingdom of heaven. Thereby, you have a reward waiting in heaven for you. Why, well, that is a fantastic lie. How many people will get to heaven only to discover that there is nothing waiting for them in heaven? That they've been deceived all their years on earth. That the money they gave for the church or the triumph did not get to heaven. Because Jesus said, it is the poor you are to give to. So, if that church was poor, Really, really poor. So poor. You know, they say beggars have no choice. A poor man does not really have so much choice. So a poor man is not really interested in how many ACs and how many these and how many that he has put to in his house. Just give me a little accommodation. Give me somewhere to hide my head. So a poor choice actually is just looking for, please, we just need a place where sun will not beat us. Rain will not beat us. Just a place where our mosquitoes were able to stay there and you know, this element of life doesn't beat us. We need a place that we can meet. That's a poor church. But when you begin to have uh, special roofing and special windows and special this and special that, things that have nothing to do with service, that have nothing to do with the service itself, that's no longer a poor church. So, and, and Jesus said, this is the poor you give to. Give to the poor. That's when you will see it in heaven. Satan said, no, just keep giving to anything. Once we put the name of Jesus on anything, give to it. You will reward, you will get it in heaven. And many people will only get to heaven to discover that they've been dealing with a liar. Why am I taking my time to explain this? I need you to understand that the devil is a liar. And when the devil grasps the scripture, he's going to convert it to a lie simple. There is another exaggeration that is going about. That, oh, Jesus loves praises. 
Oh, God loves praises. If there is something that God loves, oh, God loves praises. And the same, those of us that are shouting God loves praises, discovered in the scripture that Jesus said, For a time cometh, and now is the time, that those that will worship the Father, we can only worship Him in spirit and in truth. That's the only way the Father can be worshipped. But no, we have to close our eyes to that. It won't follow our agenda. No, we have to find a way of robbing God in. Whether he likes it or not, he must like praise. <laughs> because we as human beings, we like praise. And of course, uh, somebody who says of recent that the devil is helping us to create a God manufactured by man. That's what the devil is trying to do. Create a God that we did not read in the Bible, but that we manufactured ourselves. So we go back to the Israelites and say, you see, the Israelites have a battle, all they did was to praise God, and God answer, and God for their battle. And I begin to ask people questions that come. If God loves praises, and if it was praises that defeated the enemy, why did the Israelites not convert all their battle to praises? They should not even bother to go to war. If anybody is coming, go and carry drums. If any battle is coming, let's go and carry drums. Then I discovered that actually, it was obedience that gave them victory. God needed to prove that you are not the one fighting the battle. I am the one fighting the battle. So in few occasions, he told them to praise to the battle. In other occasions, he told them how to fight the battle. So they were actually, every time they have obeyed him, they have victory. If they have gone to battle dancing and he has not sent them, oh God, they would have entered trouble. And for everybody that spoke against the child of God in the Old Testament, they saw the wrath of God coming against them. So, same goes to the person that spoke against David. But no, we have to close our eyes to all those informations and allow the devil sell to us an activity that has no benefit on the day of judgment. So you have to sell the, uh, to us that no, when you gather, dance, dance, praise God, praise Him seriously. Just spend time praising, praising, praising. He don't you know God? He has no, He has nothing to do. He's just sitting in heaven. He's a uh, bored. He doesn't have much to do. So he's waiting for praises on earth. It is praises that makes him happy. It's praises that do this and praises that do that. And you ask yourself, where was human praises when God was God in heaven and God alone? When Adam has not been created, where was God? Was he not God? Was he less than God? Was he written anywhere that uh, Adam and his wife were praising God before he came down to the garden. Was it anywhere? When God answered the prayer of Elijah, was he praising him? Was he not the bad worshippers that were doing their thing? Because Satan, I want to believe Satan, because Satan is a liar. He loves his ego. He loves people dancing, dancing, dancing. And so the, he has created the religion of dancing for the Baal worshippers. They were the ones dancing and shouting and doing everything. Elijah, who was first following God, didn't do that. And suddenly we convert it again and say, God said he loved David because David praised him. And there is no verse like that in the entirety of the scriptures. God only said, I have found me a man after my heart. Not I have found me a man whose my heart is after. There are two different words. I have found me a man who is after my heart. Who is after whose heart? Is it God that is after the heart of David? Or David is the one after the heart of God? Why? Have you not noticed that David, he commits sins just one? Once he commits that sin, one, he doesn't go back to that sin again. Such a man. Such a man. And when Jesus came, Jesus said in the book of uh, John chapter 14, He said, 
the only person that loves me is the one that keep my commandments. When you keep my commandments, me and the Father will come and dwell with you. And he went for that to say, where two or three are gathered, I am there. So it's not that praises brings him down. Somebody says when praises go up, blessings come down. It's not in the scriptures. Who manufactured these lies and gave it to us? It's the devil. Now many of us are busy dancing, 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 dancing to where? Where is it written in the scriptures that the day Jesus will come, he will come and ask you how much praise you gave him? Who told you that he needed your praise? Didn't Jesus tell them that day that if the human beings didn't uh, shout uh, King of Glory uh, to fulfill the prophecy? Because it was a prophecy that when Jesus is coming to Jerusalem, there will be noise. This is a prophecy that should be fulfilled. If they do not fulfill the prophecy, we will raise stones to fulfill the prophecy. So it's all about prophecy, not about the praises. Where did we get this misinformation from? Where did we get this exaggeration from? From the devil. From the devil. He's a liar. And he could convert so much of religious lies. He could make us busy. Busy. For no rewards. For my fellow pastors, teachers of the world, rather, because I'm not a pastor, fellow teachers of the world, he has brought a lie that we are more special than other members of our churches, of our groups, of our of our fellowships, of our congregation, as though we are higher than them. So very soon now we begin to call ourselves the anointed man of God. The anointed man of God. I am kind of one special anointing. And by the time you go to the scriptures, that is, that is pride that is working quietly in us. We are feeling as though we are better than the other persons. And once you start feeling bigger than the other person, then the devil is beginning to tell you a lie. It's a lie. You are supposed to be a servant. A servant is lower than the others, not higher than the others. Many things that he took from the scripture, one story in the scripture, he will enlarge it, he will change it, he will magnify it, he will exaggerate it, and make a doctrine out of a scripture, out of all the scriptures in the scripture in the Bible. Things said, everybody said A, B, C, D. He will pick one, magnify it, make it into something, and push all of us there. Why? He is a liar. When he picks the scripture, he will twist the scriptures. When you hear the scripture in the mouth of the devil, do you note that when he came to meet Jesus, he was actually quoting scriptures for Jesus? Oh! Jump down! Didn't he say that Angels will catch you. Ah, ah? Why will I tempt the Lord my God? Why? Anytime he picks the scriptures, he tells a lie. He tells a lie. And if you are not, if you do not know the truth, you will fall for his lies. And unfortunately, he is able to recruit many people into his lies because we have gotten to a generation that there is a kind of message you will preach to have crowd. If you refuse to preach that message, you won't get a crowd. So it's a matter of bow to me, bow to my lies, spread my lies for me and I will make you great. Spread my lies for me and I will bring the nations to your doorstep. Refuse to spread the lies to me and I will not give you the crowd. It has gotten to that stage, unfortunately. Brethren, brothers and sisters, can we note, Satan does not have a truth in him. He will only tell a lie. And because he is so, it is karma. He can build and create denominations. He can hijack denominations and make it every other spiritual thing that you are looking for. Except the truth. Oh, you believe in fasting, you will fast. You will fast, you will be tired. You believe in prophecy, there will be prophecies. 
you believe in signs and wonders. Oh God, oh God, oh God. Please, what does it take Satan to perform a miracle? Please, please explain to me. How, what does it cost Satan to perform a miracle? If I was the one that stole your money, what does it take me to contribute the money back to you? I mean, I stole your money. I came to your account, scammed you, and collected the, the whole $10,000 in your account. I took it. Then I was passing by, I saw you on the floor crying. The whole $10,000 gone. And I said, oh, sorry, sorry. Out of my large heart, take $7,000. What does it cost me to give you the money I stole from you? When I'm the one that gave you sickness, what does it cost me to let you go? When I'm the one that gave, uh, gave the person uh, cancer, what does it cost me to free the person that put cancer in his body and, really, and remove the cancer again? What does it cost me? So if it's miracles you are looking for, Satan will give you the miracles. It doesn't cost him anything. He's the one that caused the trouble before he can take it out. <laughs> What does it cost him to use the name of Jesus? Ah. It is you that believe that uh, Satan cannot call the name of Jesus. It's you that believe that. You have been, you know, we've had drama to it. We've done a lot of drama when you just call the name of Jesus. and uh, Go and read the book of Job. You will discover. He is not even calling the name. He was in the presence of God. Just as the sons of God came to the presence of God, he joined them in the meeting. And God was like, ah, boss, <laughs> what are you doing here? He said, well, so I'm going to unfold yet. I'm not in one place. You can't catch me in one place. If you think I have one place where I know, <laughs> it's a liar. I go everywhere. I don't stay in one place. <laughs> so, to call the name of Jesus in order to deceive you is not a problem. Ah, that's not a problem. We will put a organization together. Everything that you want to kick for Christianity, we'll put it there for you. Um, fasting, kick. Uh, preaching, uh, tick. They, they will be calling the word holiness. Be holy. Stop sinning. Be holy. Ah, no problem. Ah, no. They will not even. Okay. Fornication, they will not allow for. They will not agree to fornication. Let's put there. Let's ensure they don't agree to fornication. Let, now, let's give them different levels. For those that believe that is until they say no fornication, no adultery, no, no you must not wear skirt. Uh, man, don't wear skirt. Woman, don't wear toga. Woman, cover your head. Don't use your hand. Brother, bob your head low. If that is what you are thinking, looking for, Satan will. He's a liar. He's, he's a scammer. He will grant you such. But at the end of the day, the truth to take it to heaven, you will not get it. You believe in, ah, let the sisters wear trousers now. What's your problem? Well, ah, let us be free. He will give you that one also. Yeah, take. Take. Then you believe in, I want to have sex. So. Ah. Oh, I must be having sex. So. Let me be having like 17 girlfriends. Let me be enjoying myself. I need like 17 girlfriends. Then, ah, let's give also that one a church. We'll call it once saved, forever saved. Whatever sin you commit, nothing will happen to it. Let's give them that one. Even sometimes in, in one church, you have the three of them. <laughs> you have the serious one, you have the medium, and you have the uh, least one. Oh, just come, just come. But the truth, the word of God, that we take it to heaven, the real word of God, no, rather will fill you with activities. You will, act, oh, <laughs> you will have activities, you will be tired. Even yourself, you will feel fulfilled that yes, we have done so much for God. Ah, if you see me in that church, I've been busy for eh, I've been there for forty-four years. We've been, we did this, we did that. Activities. <laughs> Why? He's a liar. Why is false prophet successful? Their father is a fantastic liar. He knows how to package them that you will fall for them. Why are false pastors and false prophets and false bishops? Why do they why do we have some people following them and they will swear to God Almighty that that man is original? Why? The father behind the lie is he is the best karma that has ever been. <laughs> and Jesus says. That's why false prophets 
will abound. They will increase. They will multiply. Only very few will make it to heaven. Why? Because the liar is good at his lies. And because many of us, all the other information we have about the devil is not about him being a liar. Unfortunately, we refuse to see the lie, even staring at our face. And it's deceiving many of us. Many of us are in lies. You have believed lies. You walk in lies. Another lie he has told is that there are special centers in this world where God is. There is one special mountain. Hey, when you get to that mountain, God is there. Then there is a special altar. God is on that altar. <laughs> and yet, if you have taken your time to read the scripture, you will have discovered that even when Solomon built the best of the auditorium of his, of his days, God told him that I will only lend my hair. I won't stay here. No building can contain me. So I will only lend my hair to the prayers prayed here. But the day you disobey me, I will break it down. It is Gentiles that will come and break it down. He said it clearly. He has never been interested in auditorium, in how big and how beautiful it is. He has never been interested. When they took Jesus to the temple of Jerusalem, and they said, see how beautiful it is, Jesus looked at him and said, oh. <laughs> uh, the time is coming when one stone will not be on the other. One stone will not be on the other. And finally, Jesus now said, for him, rather, where two or three are gathered, is there. He doesn't need an altar. He doesn't need a mountain. He doesn't need a special place. But no, Satan must make you feel as though you cannot pray in your room. Ha! If it allows you to pray in your room and have faith in your own prayer, ha! The scripture will have problem. Imagine all of us just believing that we can trust God on our own. Ha! <laughs> How will you be deceived if you believe that you can pray on your own and God will answer the prayer? How will you be deceived? How will you be led to a false prophet who will scam you? Who will collect your money? Who will collect your husband, collect your wife and do all those things? How will you fall to their hands if you are capable, if you believe by yourself that once you talk to God, He will answer? How will the devil do his job? So, he must make you see a lie that you are not adequate your bedroom is too sinful. Like some of us, he told you that there is a demon in your compound. So you cannot pray there. He told you that your landlord and your landlady is a, is a devil. That if you pray there, there is something blocking the prayer. So you need to leave your house and go to a far distance because suddenly to you, your God is now a, a locational God. He can't, the prayer cannot get to God there because, ah, no, it cannot get to God. No, you, need to, you need to go somewhere else to go and pray before your prayer can now find its way because that place is the shortcut to heaven. Huh? And now here there are some are even saying there are portals on earth. So there are certain places on earth that are portals. So your own house is not a portal. God cannot come and meet you there. And yet when we go back to the Old Testament, we see God meeting people in all kinds of places. Gideon was even hiding in a corner when God came to meet him where he was hiding. Mary was a nobody when God came to meet her and said, You are blessed among all women. God was meeting people in the, everywhere in the scriptures until he got to our time. When he got to our time now, no, God has left. He has now gone to certain places. Devil needs you to believe that. So you, are, you feel inadequate. You cannot pray on your own. And he spends longer time dealing with you. While you are busy writing letters to one man of God somewhere. Oh, the man of God in Jakarta. The man of God in South Korea. Oh, I pray one day we just read my letter. One day I pray we just pass our area. So that God can answer my prayer. So that Satan keeps such a person longer in bondage. Whereas you could have prayed and God would have answered. <laughs> and how will his own disciples scam you and deceive you if you will not believe that God is not adequately with you but is fully with another person I'm just picking samples I'm just picking little little samples little little samples because I need you to understand brethren Satan has deceived many of us when Jesus said even the very elect will be deceived if 
even if you are not careful, even the very elect will, de- will be deceived. That is, Jesus is saying, even his own disciples, disciples, the ones that are with him, disciples, elected, that he himself went to meet and say, Peter, follow me, John, follow me, this, follow me, Judas Iscariot, follow me, even they will be deceived. And of course, Judas Iscariot was deceived, a follower of Jesus. You are praying for encounter. I want to encounter Christ. I want to encounter Christ. Judas Iscariot did not encounter. He was with Christ. Satan finished him. Adam and his wife, they've never seen a lie before. They've never seen anything before. Satan deceived them. How be it you who have not read your Bible? How how about you who have refused to learn the scriptures? You have submitted Bible reading to the other person. Whatever they say is what you agree. You are the simplest and easiest person to de- to be deceived. Since you have come to believe that yes, the anointing of God has to go on certain persons, it can't come on you. They are so easy to be deceived. How many of us are deceived by the devil? Now, this is now bringing me to all that we have said is bringing us somewhere. Now, Jesus now said in John chapter 14 verse 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Hmm. That is, the only way to defeat the devil, the only way to defeat the devil is not that looking for the devil. Because even when the Bible says uh, about the devil, it says resist the devil and he will flee. Not that he will be destroyed. Resist him, he will flee. He's coming back. <laughs> he never said resist the devil, he will flee permanently. What? No. When he was tempting the Lord Jesus Christ, did he go away permanently? Never. Can't you see him coming to the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the Sanhedrins and the chief priests? He kept coming back. He doesn't give up. So the only way to defeat him, no matter the number of times he comes, is that stay in the place where Satan cannot stay. Simple. You. Go and remain permanently where Satan cannot stay. If we go back again to what Jesus said, Jesus said, Satan has been a liar from the beginning. Why? Because he cannot abide in the truth. He cannot stay where there is the truth. In John chapter 8 verse 44, John chapter 8 verse 44, Jesus said, Ye of your father are the devil, and the lust of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in truth, because there is no truth in him. Why can't he abide in the truth? Because there is no truth in him. So anywhere there is the truth, what happens to Satan? He cannot abide there. So what it does is that it goes far to draw you out of the truth with a lie. Where there is the truth, Satan cannot continuously stay there. No, he cannot abide in the body of someone that stays in the truth. Fasting for 77 days does not chase away Satan. Going for deliverance services. You know, you have, uh, some of us have gone for deliverance services seven times. Some of us, it's 20 times you have gone for deliverance service. And for churches that does deliverance service every month, and you have been a member of that church for 10 years, you have done 120 deliverance services. Yes, you are safe. You, tomorrow you are still going to pray against the devil. So, <laughs> it's not working. What works is that go to where Satan cannot stay. Go into the truth. He cannot abide in the truth because there is nothing inside of him that stays with the truth. He cannot abide. You know meaning of abide? Stay permanently. He can visit. Oh, he goes to heaven. He goes to see God. 
if Job says that when the sons of God were gathered, he too was there in the presence of God. So he can go there, but he doesn't abide there. That's why when God asked him, said, I, I'm going to have food. He couldn't even tell God exactly where he is. See a liar. He's karma. He can't tell God. I say, as though God cannot see him. I'm going to have food yet. <laughs> I know how many people do we have on earth then. But yet, he was going to and fro. He cannot permanently stay. Of course, he will visit. He doesn't give up. But he cannot permanently stay. Somebody is bedeviled. He's is, 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 is under the curse of the devil. Please, let him abide in the truth. Please, if you will take your time to study the scriptures, will you note with me, that they were always bringing thousands and thousands and thousands of people to Jesus. He heals them all. Next week they will still see new one to bring. He heals them all. They will still bring, see new one to bring. He heals them all. Have been healed them all. Heal them all. In the same place. When it was time to crucify him, we still have enough people, kind demons, enough to say crucify him. Why? He's a compassionate Jesus. He's healing them. But they were not free from the devil. No, they weren't. They have to abide in the truth. Stay in the truth of Jesus. Then Satan will not have power over them. Do you note with me that among all the disciples, the one that was found wanting was Judas Iscariot. When they are calling the name of the disciples, his name is always last. Even when they were having dinner and everybody was with Jesus, Judas Iscariot has gone. And you know, none of the disciples felt like, ah, this is strange. Where is Judas? Where is Judas is Carrot? He's always with us. How come he's not here? He's strange. They didn't even know he's not around. Why? He has not been abiding. Jesus will probably be teaching and he has gone out. That's why he's able to see the, uh, the chief priest. Because if he's permanently with Jesus, he couldn't have been, have had the opportunity to go and see the chief priest. He must have been skipping classes, skipping meetings. He's not abiding in Christ. It was available for the devil. Brethren, how do we abide in Christ? Thank God, God merciful, decided to send Christ to us. And Christ came and spoke, and we saw him directly speaking in the book of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, called the Gospels. The Gospels, which are the scriptures for Christianity brought by God himself because the scripture must come from God God is the original of the scripture man doesn't help God to write scripture it is God that speaks that's why Jesus said man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God he intentionally said that so we know that if a man is talking we must have a reference we can reference the man to so when all the apostles are speaking, when Brother John, Brother Peter, Brother Paul are all talking, we have a gospel to reference them to and say, okay, let's confirm. Even they themselves say, test all spirits. They didn't, they didn't exclude themselves from the spirit to be tested. So we have to, this day that Paul is writing, is it? let's go and confirm from the scripture of Christ. So we have Jesus, who is our scripture, who is the truth. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father except through me. So you must be satisfied that Jesus is enough completely and completely enough. You sit down with the Gospels and you learn from Christ. And when Jesus was going in Matthew chapter 28 verse 18, 19, He says, Go into the world and make disciples of all the nations, teaching them to observe all that I have taught you. So, the way to overcome as a disciple of Christ and gain all the benefit that Jesus brought for you is that you must be taught to observe only all that Jesus commanded. Satan cannot stay where there is a truth because there is no truth inside of him. And because there is no truth inside of him, it will be uncomfortable to stay there too long. <laughs> so, he has to leave. And go and stay in his life. And go and stay in his life. I was once uh, passing by somewhere. I saw a church was having a program. 
and God opened my eyes and I saw a demon sitting on top of the church and the church was doing praise worship. They were busy dancing. They were dancing seriously. And the demon was sitting on top of their service on the on the uh, on the building. And I was a bit surprised that wow why can the demon sit there? Say, well, he has told he has sold them lies. Their gospel is powerless. Because it's, it's, it has been tampered with. It's no longer the original. Many of us know that if you go to a hospital to take drugs, they will give you the number of days you should use the drug, especially those sickness like malaria and typhoid. You might be told that you are going to use that drug for four days, for five days, for six days. Generally, uh, malaria injection is about three days. Imagine you took one day and you left. Oh my God. Not only will the malaria come back, the injection you took last time is now powerless. You need to look for a stronger one. If you took two days and, and stopped, the malaria will come back. And the drug you used before will be powerless. Because we have so many false teachings. How there? Teaching us what Jesus ever taught us. We have gotten to a position or a place now where simple gospel has no effect on people again. Simple scriptures have no effect. Rather they get angry and they get mad. They hate you for preaching the truth. And they delist you. They mark your name. This one is not coming back to this church again. <laughs> yeah, the message is preaching. We don't like it. So many persons are so much, so incorrigible that the truth does not face them again. They are not moved by the truth again. They have collected in, uh, incomplete dose of Christianity. Unfortunately, they can't make it to heaven. Brethren, it is time for you. Now that you have known the devil, that is a liar. He lies in everything. Lying revelation, lying manifestation, lying religion, lying messages. Even when he makes it as though it is Jesus he is magnifying, inside it is a lie. Praising God is a fantastic thing. It's what we have to do. But deceiving you that praising God is for collecting things from God. <laughs> That's a lie. It doesn't mind if you are calling the name of Jesus. It doesn't mind. As long as you are going to hell. Well, keep calling the name of Jesus. Even get more people to call the name of Jesus with you. It doesn't mind. Keep calling the name of Jesus. It doesn't mind. As long as you are not going to heaven. Well, why should I stop you? At least, if you were in the club drinking, you will still know you are doing something bad. But if you are in the church and you are drinking, uh, say Jesus converted water to wine. Uh, you are drinking. You enjoy yourself. <laughs> At least you are not my problem. I will ensure that you get testimonies once in a while. I will give you a manifestation. I will do spiritual boom, 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 boom. You will feel moved. Yes, just continue there. <laughs> I will even help you to recruit more people into that church so that they live where the word of God can easily work on their life. If they are still going to club and uh, being open prostitution, ah. Uh, they will not accept Jesus. They, they, they will easily accept Jesus if they are still into open prostitution. But let them be tongue speaking prostitution. Oh, it's difficult to now preach to them. That's why, honestly, it's easier to preach to chronic sinners than church members. Church people, they will hear what you are saying. <laughs> so, brethren, now that you know that Satan is a lie and you have known how he performs his lies. I'm not going to raise prayer point for you to not start praying against Satan. The antidote to Satan is give him, take him to where he cannot stay. I heard of this that the ego, when the ego takes a serpent, it flies so high up because at that altitude a serpent is powerless. A serpent is powerless. Uh, if there is a dog that is giving you problem and is barking and cursing. Put the dog in the car and start going around in circles in the car. Let the car, you will see the dog is going to be confused and start vomiting. All the back end is we calm down. So carry the devil to where he cannot operate. Carry him into the truth. Take your time. Go and sit down with Jesus. Learn of Jesus. That's what Jesus said. He said, learn of me. Learn of me. Come and learn of Christ. And that's why when Jesus was going, 
is process that he laid down was the process of discipleship. Discipleship is practical learning. And any discipleship where Jesus is not the example is also a lying discipleship. Any discipleship where Jesus is not the example, where the man becomes the example for you, the man or the woman is not your permanent example. That's a fake discipleship, is a lying a, a discipleship, it's of the devil. It must be God. Jesus must be the example in discipleship. It is Jesus that is making disciples. So brethren, your prayer and your action will be that God, I want to know the truth. I will limit myself now to Jesus who said he is the truth and he cannot lie. So I will go back and study Jesus. And whatever Jesus asks me to do is what I will do. I will not hide to it. I will not subtract from it. I will not accept anybody's revelation. Somebody says I died. When I got to heaven, one angel said, if you are paying tithe, come here. If I am not paying tithe, ah, if they will reduce heaven to tithe thing. <laughs> that is not in the scriptures. Even in the Old Testament, when tight, the, 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 the punishment for not paying tight is that the birds will eat their farm. That's all. <laughs> That's the punishment for not paying tight. Rain will not fall. And the birds will eat the plant. There was no hell there. Everyone never said he's sending anybody to hell. So, we need to go back to the scripture. Don't hard to it. Don't deduct from it. As Jesus has said it, if you make up your mind to do it and ask for grace from Jesus to do it, then you start defeating Satan. I pray that you will defeat Satan in Jesus. We have gotten into about an hour of discussion now, so I want, I want to stop here. By tomorrow we are going to look at the tools that God wants you to use in the truth. Uh, I am not able to pronounce the letter how very well. So my tooth, I have been having problems. Uh, so I don't have to say this now. The tools, T-O-O-L-S, that you need for the tooth, T-R-U-T-H. God will help us. I never believe I can be teaching the word of God because I can't pronounce how very well. So I thought it would be a matter. But here I am. So please accept it as it, as, as it comes. By tomorrow, God will help us to look at the tools that God has given to us that we're going to use. So we can defeat the lies of the devil. Because it's the truth that will be used to defeat the devil. It cannot stay in the truth. So can you take the matter to God in prayers? Commit this to God. Make up your mind. It might be difficult for some of us. In, 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 some of us might just discover that we have not been in the right place. I think in the right place concerning the truth where you are is not the truth you have believed so many things that is not found in Christ some of us that are doing the uh, Bible reading group with us you will discover that we have gotten to the end of Matthew and many things that have been told to do today we can't find it in, the, in that scripture so you need to pray to God to take you back to the truth God will help us in Jesus name can we take this matter to God in prayer God bless you